Oh, here we go. Here we go. We got a good one for you today. It's pro. It's uh, Akuma Wednesday. So we're going to be talking about Akuma product this today. I want to thank y'all for joining us, and we're off. All right. So, first of all, we got to go over the contest. You got to leave stars over on Facebook on my business page if you want a chance to win that free trip on the. Uh, Bowline Sport Fishing Boat, Amanda and Justin Botrell have offered a free three-quarter day trip in the month of August for one lucky raffle winner who leaves me some stars. And you can only do that on my Facebook business page. If you go over to my Facebook business page and leave some stars, you'll be very, very happy and you'll be very, very lucky if you actually win that trip. You're going to be very, very happy if you win that free trip. You're going to be stoked to go out on bowline sport fishing and win that trip with Justin. He's a great captain. He uh, kind of fishes the way I do, so it kind of helps. And you'll have a great time out there. Just leave some stars that enters you into the raffle to win that free trip. Second of all, if you want to win a case of Baja Jerky, go to our YouTube channel. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. One lucky winner over there on our YouTube channel is going to win a case of Baja Jerky. And then today we're talking, we're going to talk about all the different scenarios that can happen when you're out there on the boat that are going to affect what you catch. But first of all, I want to talk about this PCH rod. The PCH rod from Akuma is absolutely insane. I love these rods. I love the way... They feel in your hand. I love how light they are. I love the fishability of these rods. The PCH rod by Akuma is absolutely my go-to rod. I have plenty of these in all different sizes. This is the one I use for fishing in the mangroves. It's seven foot, or excuse me, seven and a half foot. It's a 20 to 40 pound rod. I call it a medium to medium heavy rod. It's got a really quick tip that shuts off very, very fast. Great for the way I fish in the mangroves, fishing with the straight braid, jerking those snook out of the mangroves and those little baby groupers. But I love this setup. The PCH rod has never let me down. I love the comfortability of this in my hands. I love how light the rod is because, as you know, I fish pretty much every single day. And the durability of these rods, the abuse that we put them through with all the different people that catch fish when they go fishing with me, these rods stand up to the abuse. You're going to love these things. The guides don't chip and break real easy like a lot of other manufactured rods. The guides work very well. They don't chip and break, which is imperative if you fish as much as I do and the abuse that the rods go through, slamming on the deck, falling down. These things stand up good. But, man, I just love the grip. I love every part of this PCH rod. It just works flawless. And then you rig it up with a, with a Komodo reel, and this thing's going to – your rod in reel setup is going to look just as bitching as mine is. So check out the PCH series of rods, and you all have a different approach. But the PCH rod will cover you in every aspect. They got those bitching – long rods also that they sell the nine footers that i have a handful of also the pch rod is just my go-to rod it's made by okuma go to okuma.com check out the pch rod and then get down to one of your local tackle stores and get yourself a handful of them you're not going to be disappointed the best part about them is they're priced to the consumers so we can afford to fish with them we don't have to take a second out on our house to buy a fishing pole and they stand up. They're super durable. I catch, I don't know, you might want to watch some of my videos. I catch a couple of fish once in a while. And we have, if you watch a lot of our videos, you'll see that PCH rod in, in action, working hard, catching lots of fish. So check it all out. All right, gang. So here we go today. We're going to talk, we're going to dive into uh, what I experience when I'm doing the guide service, going with you on your boat and the things I see that cause you to not have a very successful day. And these are things that you can fix very, very easy, very, very simple. And the number one thing, and I see this all the time driving around Southern California. I see your rod and reel setups 
on your boat in the rod holders while you're trailing your boat down the road with sinkers hanging off of them, hooks already tied on them, jigs hanging off them, jigs hooked to your guide. Listen, gang, your lure goes on the little ring right here on the base of your rod, or if it doesn't have one, it goes on your reel. Your jigs, your hooks, never go on the guides. Anybody that hooks them on the guide, if you hook your lure or your hook or your sinker on the guide, we already know you're a booger eater. The moment we see those things hooked on there, we know you're a booger eater. Why do I not have this on the patented hook ring on the PCH rod? It's because I wanted to be able to read it to you, so I put it on my reel. But I'm never going to put it on my guide. I'm never going to hook a hook onto one of the guides on one of my rods. And I see your car or your truck dragging your boat down the freeway and your hooks are hooked on your guide and you have a lure hanging on there or you have a big sinker. It's beating the sh living bejesus out of your rod. It's beating the heck out of your guides. It's just beating it to a pulp. Plus, how lazy are you that you cannot cut your lure off at the end of the day are your hooks, are your sinkers. Are you that tired from fishing? Well, you may be if you're a member of my website because you actually caught stuff. But if you're just a normal booger eater, you probably didn't catch anything anyway and you're just lazy and you left your hooks on your run. Gang, at the end of every fishing trip, if you look at the guys that are successful when they go fishing, you know what they're doing on the way in? They're breaking down their stuff. They're taking their lure off. They're taking it off. They're winding the line in. They're probably putting a little loop on it. Put a little loop on the line. Then they're hooking it onto their handle of their, now look it. I know this is taking an awful long time. And they're hooking that little loop onto the handle of their reel. Well, come on, Dave. Ah. Put that little loop on there. Then they take the reel off the rod. Always. <laughs> I do anyway. And, and the guys I know that know how to fish do. Take the reel off. Run it under a little fresh water. Pat it dry. Put it in my bag. Run a little fresh water across my rod. Put my rods all together in a bundle over in the corner. Put a little piece of Velcro around or rubber band or whatever you use to hold your rods. Never store your rods with the reels on them. And never leave your lures or your hooks hooked to your rod when you're done for the day. Oh, my gosh. That is the number one thing I see everybody's biggest mistake. And you go look in your corner or you're in your garage right now. I bet you got rods and reels hooked all set up. You're probably not going fishing for another month. Why do you have them all hooked up? You don't even know what you're going to have for bait next time you go. You don't know how you're going to fish. You don't know what you're going to fish for. There's no way you could possibly know because you don't. These go in a drawer in my bedroom, the reels. The rods go in the rod rack. With no reels on them, always. I don't have reels on any of my rods. And then when I decide that I'm going to go fishing again tomorrow, I'll pick out the reels that I want to use. I'll make sure they're filled to the very tip top with line all the way to the top. If it's not filled all the way to the top, I'm not taking it. I'll get another one of my reels that is filled to the top. I'll grab a spool of line that I have in the closet and I'll spool the reel up all the way to the rim. All Every one of my reels that I fish with are filled to the rim. Why? Because it all matters. Everything I'm talking about matters. It all matters. It's not because I have a bunch of extra time and I just feel like doing stuff. It's because I like to catch shit when I go fishing. I don't want to fail. I like to catch when I go fishing. I think it's super important to make sure that you're totally set for when you get out there on the boat and everything's perfectly set up so that you can be successful. That's why I don't leave anything tied to my rods. I don't leave any reels on the rods. I put all this stuff away. Then 
I get a call from Dwayne Diego or Pete Grossbeck or Steve Lazar. I get a call from Todd Manser. One of my buddies says, hey, we're going to go up. Uh, we're going to go blue marlin fishing tomorrow. I know not to bring this. I know to get my 80 wide out of the closet, make sure it's full of brand new fresh line. And I'm going to grab one of my rods off the rack and I'm going to put my reel on it and I'm going to go fishing. Now, if Jimmy Decker calls me and says, hey, we're going to go bass fishing tomorrow, I'm going to grab this reel. I'm going to grab my PCH rod. I'm going to throw this reel in my backpack. I'm going to throw this rod, maybe two rods, just in case I break one, and a couple of these reels in my backpack. I'm going to get on Jimmy's boat. I'm going to put the reel on the rod on the way out of the harbor because we're in Newport, and I know it's going to take 45 minutes. I'm going to have plenty of time. But I don't leave all this stuff strapped together. That is the silliest thing I've ever seen. Okay? You're, you're blowing it. Take it off the rod. Make sure it's all clean. There's not salt caked all over it. Because you actually spent money on this stuff and you want it to last for a little while. Remove the rod and reel from each other. Clean them all off. And then find out what you're going to use the next day. Or what you're going to use the next time you go fishing. But I guarantee you it's not going to be what you used the last time you went. Unless you go fishing every single day like I do. But even when I was running the... Wild and sack up in California, and I fished four or five days a week. We were constantly breaking down the rods on the way in. You can ask Chase. You can ask Mike. You can ask Max. You can ask Shayla. I was always making them break all the rod and reels apart on the way in, clean them all off. I wanted to see all the reels in a pile so that I could see and make sure they all have plenty of line on them and that they're ready for the next trip. They got clean top shots on them. Everything's clean and ready for the net. I'm going to take – another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull 20 feet of line off. Then I'm going to wind it back on slow and feel it between my thumb and my index finger and see if there's any nicks or cuts or any wear on the line anywhere that's going to make it so that when I do hook that big whopper fish, the line's going to break instantly. I'm going to strip 20 feet of line off, or if I have a top shot, I'm just going to pull out the top shot and feel it with my fingers and see if there's any frayedness to it or any nicks in it. All this stuff I'm talking about matters. It's all about being prepared when you go fishing. Then I'm going to take my reel, attach it to my rod. Then I'm going to check my drag before I ever put a bait on and throw it in the water. I'm going to check my drag because I'm expecting that when I throw my bait in the water, I'm going to get a bite because that's why I went fishing. I hear this from my clients all the time. Oh, I'll figure the drag out once I get my bait in the water. <sighs> Better not do that when you're fishing with me because we're not stopping on nothing. We're probably stopping on some fish. And then you're going to throw your bait in the water and try to adjust your drag while you're bit and that tuna's on or that Dorado or that calico bass or whatever it is. And then you discover that your drag's too tight and the line breaks the minute the bait hits the water. Gang, you've got to do all this preparation before you get out there. You've got to do all that. You've got to put your rod on your reel, string up the guides, make sure you didn't miss any guides, put your hook on. Check your drag. What's the easiest and best way to check the drag? Well, if you're a member of my yoursaltwaterguide.com, you already know because we have a whole series on drag setting. But we'll run over it real quick here. What I like to do is grab the line with my hand and pull on it. If it comes out real easy like it does right now, I need to tighten the drag. If it comes out real easy, if it doesn't come out at all, if I can't pull it out, I got to loosen the drag. I want to be able to wrap my hand around the line and it's got to be able to pull out with a little bit of pressure. Not a lot of pressure. Why? Because I don't want the line to break when the fish bites it. He has to be able to take string off your reel. The biggest problem I see most people do is when they get a bite, and the fish starts to take the line off their reel, 
They put their thumb on it immediately because they didn't set the drag proper. They put their thumb on there, and then what happens? Once you put your thumb on there, the line breaks. What I always tell everybody, if you're going to put your thumb on there, just grab my dikes. They're usually right there on the bait tank. Grab my dikes and just cut your line right now. Let's just take the middleman out of it. Let's just cut the line. We don't have to worry about them pesky fish bugging us. If you're going to use your thumb for a drag system, just cut your line. Just cut it. Forget about all that bullshit. Cut it. And if you're going to tell me, and I've heard this from a lot of clients, well, I know exactly how much pressure to put on with my thumb. Then why did you buy the reel? Why don't you just have a drop line? Why don't you just have a drop line and just apply the pressure with your hand? Because you know. Because you bought the reel because somebody spent millions of dollars embedding the drag system so that you didn't have to use your thumb. Back in the olden days, if you look at Michael Folks's old movies, you'll see the Tuna Club, those guys, they used leather straps for the drag system. You don't need to do any of that. You don't need to use your thumb. People have spent millions of dollars inventing the drag system for these reels so you don't have to use your thumb. That's the biggest problem I see people, when that fish starts to take the line, that thumb goes on the spool and bam, the line breaks. How lame is that? Listen, if you, well, if you did, star drag is the best drag, but if you have a lever drag, you're gonna have to make sure your drag set before you get your line in the water. That's for damn sure. But if you have a star drag, you may be able to get away with it. You could tighten the drag up a little bit during the battle. That's okay. But I'm not going to ever do that. I'm going to grab my line, pull. That's way too loose. I'm going to tighten it up a little bit, pull. Getting a little bit better. Tighten it up a little bit. Pull. A little bit more. This can handle a little bit more. Maybe two clicks. Ah, I like that. And it's coming off smooth. It's not all... If it's coming off like jerky... That's because your drag sucks. Your drag washers suck. Okay? At the end of the day, when you're all done fishing for the day, you back the drag all the way off. Drag all the way off. Put the clicker on. That way the line just doesn't come free-flowing off the reel. Then I rinse them off and I put them in their drawer. Those are the, the, those are the major problems I see when I go with you on your boat. Now, the next thing I see is hook size. 99.9% .9 of the people I go fishing with have too big of hooks. I'm just being honest. The hooks are way too big. When they're using a sardine, they're using a six-aught hook. When they're using an anchovy, they're using a two-aught hook. Hook size matters, and it matters a lot. You want to make sure you have the right hook for the right size bait when you get on the boat. That's another reason why you never want to leave all your stuff tied up. Those of you that have your stuff already tied up in the garage, oh, I don't want to restring it. Up. I'm so tired, Captain Dave. I'm so tired. It's so hard to restring it. So I leave it all hooked up. Well, I guarantee you go out in that garage, your hooks, if you're using the right kind of hooks, if you're using a bronze or a black hook, those hooks are rusty. They get rusty right away. That's how they're made. They're made to disintegrate in the water. So the minute they touch water and then they come out of the water and you leave them tied to your rod, they're going to get rusty. You don't want to use rusty hooks. And then you don't even know what size. You couldn't possibly know what size the bait is going to be the next time you go. There's no way because the bait boat fishes every night for bait. So you want to have a plethora of extra hooks so when you get on your way out, I don't care if you're fishing on a sport boat or you're fishing on a private boat, you have no idea what size the bait is. You could ask the crew on the way out to the bait barge, hey, what size, or you could just wait until they start scooping the bait on the boat. Some of it's going to fall on the deck when they're loading the bait. It happens every time. There's no way around it. You can look at that bait and you can go, oh, shh, six inch sardines. Great. I'm putting on a three odd hook. All right. Everything falls out of the net. It's all anchovies. It's all like three-inch anchovies. Great. I'm putting on a number four or a number two bronze hook, thin wire. 
It all matters. Every part of this stuff matters. It all matters. Then what I wanted to show you is take your reel. If the line's coming out looking like this, looking like a spring, that's why I'm using this one to show you. If it's looking like a spring, like a slinky, then you need fresh line. You need to get some fresh line. You need, that's why I use monofilament as a top shot, maybe 50 feet, probably 10 feet, maybe just enough so that they, they, uh, the knot's not going through my guides, okay? Then I'm gonna make sure my line's fresh and clean. When I run my finger down it, it doesn't feel all twisty like this line does. All this stuff matters, gang, because you don't know. When you get on that boat, let's just say you're going out fishing on the San Diego tomorrow. You have no idea if he's gonna find some giant bluefin on his way to the Coronados. Or you don't even know if he's going to the Coronado. He might've got... He might have woke up in the morning on his drive down. He might have got a call from one of his buddies on one of the other sport boats. Tells him the bluefin are eating the paint off the bottom of the boat. You got to get out here. And it's on the 302. And he decides to go out there. That's why it's imperative to make sure everything you have is fresh. Fresh hooks. Fresh top shot. Fresh fluorocarbon. Reels aren't covered in salt. All these things matter. All this stuff matters. I'm going to just try to help as much as I can. If you're not a member of my website, go to YourSaltWaterGuide.com. Check out all the videos. They cover everything we talked about today. I could go on and on and on about this for the rest of my life and never cover all of it. We've already gone 25 minutes into this. I never go this long. It's usually 15, but I'm passionate about what I'm talking about. Hopefully you're watching and you're enjoying all the videos, gang. I just want to give you guys an update, gang. The month of June, we just got all the numbers in. We had over 14 million views for the month of June across all social media. Thank you all. That is incredible. I can't, I cannot thank you enough. Without your views, I can't do this. I need you all to view. I need, I need those views. I appreciate the views. I can't believe how many views there are. It's unbelievable and i thank you all thank you very much from the bottom of my heart gang my monkey just to let you know he's coming along marley he was very traumatized hopefully soon he'll be able to be on the show he's coming along he's coming along he's coming along thank you very much for your badges thank you very much for your stars thank you for every piece of support that you all give me i really really appreciate it I do. You don't understand. I never in my wildest imagination thought that at 60 years old, I would be an influencer. Now I'm, I'm astonished. I'm amazed. And I, and I, it wouldn't, none of this would happen without all of you. So thank you very much. And everything I share with you is the honest to God truth. It might not be, you might get your feelings hurt. Some of you snowflakes out there. I'm sure I hurt your feelings all the time, but I'm only telling the truth. It's all about fishing, and, and it's something that I'm super passionate about, and I've been able to make a living at it for 47 years, and I'm just trying to share my passion with you. So thank you all. Tomorrow we'll be talking about ops and fluorocarbon. Don't forget to check out the PCH rods. Don't forget to leave us some stars. Don't forget to leave us some badges. Tomorrow morning, We'll start out the day. I'll go live across TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. I'll show you guys Marley. We'll show you. We'll we'll talk to Mar little Marley, my marmoset monkey, in the morning. I'll show you guys all. We'll go live in the morning. We'll show you Marley. Show you how he's doing, how he's progressing. And uh, thank you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Goodbye.